let's read from three portions of scriptures, short, short, and then let's start with Psalm 23. Psalm 23. Psalm 23 verse 5 says, You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Actually, the root translation should be my cup is filled. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Psalm 103, 1 to 5. Psalm 103, verses 1 to 5. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your iniquities? Who heals all your diseases? Who redeems your life from destruction? Who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies? Who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles? Third John verse 2. Don't start from Genesis. You won't get there on time. You can start from Revelation and move back. Third John verse 2 says, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. The King James says, Beloved, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospereth. Beloved, I wish above all things that you may pro thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health, just as your soul prospers. Mark chapter 8. Mark chapter 8. Mark chapter 8. I read from verse 22 to 26. Then he came to Bethsaida, and they brought a blind man to him and begged him to touch him. So he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the town. And when he had spit on his eyes and put his hands on him, he asked him if he saw anything. And he looked up and said, I see men like trees walking. Then he put his hands on his eyes again and made him look up. And he was restored and saw everyone clearly. I want to speak on a second touch. A second touch. Concerning the first, parents, don't be too busy. You are not busier than Jesus. <laughs> you are not busier than God that oversees everything happening on earth, including you, everything you do every day. If you look at your life and see how God looks into every detail of it, you can know how busy he is. It's better... So, you know, the Bible says obedience is better than sacrifice. And that's a popular scripture in Nigeria today. It's better to, to pray the price of obedience than to pay the price of fighting crisis. Are you here? A lot of things are better handled when they are elective. That's when you have a choice. For instance, a hernia. If you allow it to become a crisis, it can be very... A hernia is a simple thing. 
But it's better to deal with it when it's in the left elective stage. You can decide, okay, let me get this thing done. When it becomes a crisis, it can become an issue. It can get your intestines convoluted. It can become a major thing. It's better to pay the price in obedience than to pay the price of crisis. Let hold. Let's move together. Let's get things done together. There is no accident in the things of God. A second touch. Father, I thank you in Jesus' name for your eternal holy word. And thank you for your Holy Spirit whom you have given to us. Holy Spirit, we appreciate you. We cherish the things you do in our lives. Without you, I don't know where we would be today. Heavenly Father, thank you for the word you have sent. Establish this word in the life of somebody today for whom you sent it. Help somebody straight today to receive a second touch from you that will complete what you have started in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. A second touch. A second touch. Somebody told me some time ago that every miracle of Jesus was instant. He said that he doesn't like being patient. Same, but in the Bible, that everything Jesus did, it was in, I told him it was not so. And I gave him instances in the Bible. There were some blind men that Jesus prayed for, and just at the first touch, their eyes opened. Blind Bartimaeus, for instance. But we see a case where the man needed to be revisited by Jesus Christ himself. Before he could get it perfected. Now we read from Psalm 23 verse 5. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You prepare a table before me. In the presence of my enemies. In the garden of Eden, God prepared a paradise for Adam in the presence of his enemy. Are you here? And nobody can tell me that Adam was not anointed because he carried the presence of God. Nothing was tampered with us at that point. So Adam had everything he took to deal with the enemy. When God gives you a promised land, don't think there will be no contest over it by the time you get there. Some people are not just ready to fight for anything. It should come to you by entitlement. What's the anointing upon you for? Warfare. The anointing in you is for holy living. Is for strength, inner strength. And that's the one to protect the most. Are you here? The anointing within you, the one inside you, is the one that keeps you going. The one that comes on you, upon you, is for service. If the one inside you begins to fail, it can't carry the one coming upon you. Ministry will become a burden. Are you hearing me? It will become a heavy burden if the anointing within is waning. So God puts his anointing, his spirit inside us, and he puts his spirit upon us, and we are good to go. Adam did not do something about the enemy. So the enemy scattered his table. And he was driven out from the garden. He prepares
has a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Don't think that when God gave you lovely children, that the enemy was happy. It's not a coincidence. Sarah, Abraham's wife, was barren and bare not. The way the Bible put it. You, say, <laughs> you know the language of the Bible there? Eh? He said, she was barren. Has God not communicated it? And bear not. And Rebecca was barren. And Rachel was barren. What was the enemy fighting? And then eventually, you break through and have children. And you think the enemy is happy. When I say let's fast, you will say, I can pray in my house. Let's come together and pray. When you have the opportunity, people come from far and near. I was surprised. I went to Sheikh Brother Dikina Desimi this morning. I said, ah, How did you swim out to be here this morning, this early? Do you know where he called? Teddy Village. The Indubisis from Ebu Temeta. Those in first act stroll to church even when they are late. Shame on you. Anyone that strolls to church like a daisically when you are late. Shame. Shame on you. People need to sit up. You call for a, church, a fast in the church. People won't come. And you are there criticizing Muslims. You are there criticizing them. Can you pay the price they pay? They were interviewing, I showed you a clip the other day in a service, was it Tuesday or so? In a shopping mall, they were interviewing, in a, one of these white countries, western countries, they were interviewing elderly people in, in a church. Just one question, can you quote one verse of the scripture? None of them was able to quote one verse. When you ask them, they say we are Christian nations. The Muslim has the Quran in his head. It takes a sacrifice to break certain grounds. You don't be deceived by this grace message. Jesus, the author and finisher of grace, fasted 40 days and 40 nights, probably on water only. The law came by Moses, but grace and truth came by the Lord Jesus Christ. He fasted 40 days and 40 nights. Grace. He prepares a table before us in the presence of our enemies. Note, the enemy is here, but are not about the enemy today. He prepares a buffet for us, but there is an adversary there. And when God has set his table, it's a buffet. I don't think it's three course. I think it's more than that. Are you hearing me? Take what you want. You know, when there is a buffet, some people, when they go for the first round, they feel embarrassed to go again. In a buffet, you can go ten times if you want. Provided you're not stacking your place like a mountain each time you go. That, that's what you should be embarrassed about. Some people, when they go the first round, they want to take... A, in a buffet, you can go ten times. But just take it easy each time. Hmm. And so God prepares a buffet for us. And is serve yourself. Buffet is serve yourself. So Jesus will ask, what do you want? Serve yourself. Serve yourself. He has prepared it. Serve yourself. Help yourself. What do you want? You can go as many rounds as possible as you want in the lost buffet. 
In James chapter 1, verse 5, he said, If anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all men liberally and upbraided not. That means he won't scold you if you lavished or wasted the first one he gave you. You come back again in humility, he will give you. He will not be mad at you. Go as many rounds as possible. Jesus said, man, and uh, asking certain things, uh, questions. The man said, what do I do, I do to, that I may inherit eternal life? Jesus said, all these things. Uh, he he pointed into the provisions of the law and so on. He said, all these things have I kept from my youth. Jesus said, there is one thing you are lacking. One thing. If there is one thing you are lacking, go again to the table. Are you here? If one thing is still lacking, go back to the table. God won't be mad at He loves it when we approach him. He loves it when we depend on him for our needs. Go back again. Go back again. And in the last table, I, I, I've looked and there are certain things that are not there. A lot of goodies. But when you look, you won't see sin. There is no sin on that table. Are you here? Look closely. Check out. There is no sickness on that table. Healing, rather, is the children's bread. It's on the table. Healing is on that table. I've looked there. There is no depression there. There is no confusion on that table. God is not the author of confusion. You can't find it on his table. You look on the lost table, there is no poverty there to take. No lack. Check out that table, there is no sorrow on it. You look around, you see good things. Wisdom is there. Knowledge is there. Understanding is there. Healing is there. Life is there. Strength for the weak. You can go as many rounds as possible. I would like us to pray this morning. So I don't want to spend so much time talking about it. Let me just in some simple ways point us to this thing. In 3 John verse 2, the Bible says, I pray. Beloved, I pray. King James says, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. Galatians 3, 13 and 14 says that Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Having been made a curse for us as it is written, cursed is he that hangs on a tree. That the blessing of Abraham, verse 14, might abound to the Gentiles or to the nations. There is no curse on the lost table. It's taken away. Are you here? There is no curse. Headache is not there. Headache is not there. Toothache is not there. High blood pressure is not on that table. There is no hypertension on the lost table. Rather, there is remedy for it there. Some of us think, some of us, when you are in Christ, you think that because your father had it, your mother had it, then it means you will have it. So you give that as an excuse to have it. You don't have to have it. I don't have to be hypertensive because my, my father was hypertensive or my mother is hypertensive. I don't have to. On the lost table, there is no hypertension. Wake up! Colossians 1.12 Giving thanks unto God who has made us fit to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. Inheritance of... Check that table. You will see your inheritance. God has fitted us to partake of his table. 
It's a table of the inheritance of the saints in the light. No work of darkness is there. No sorrow is there. We must reject what God did not provide to us. If you're inheriting hypertension, for instance, it's not from God. Are you here? It's not from Christ. It's not a provision of the cross. In other words, it's not provided by his sacrifice. And grace only gives us access to what Jesus paid for on our behalf, not what he took away. He took away the curse. The curse of the law was threefold. Spiritual death, numbness to the things of God, separation. The curse of poverty and lack. It, poverty is a curse. And then the curse of sickness and disease. That's the curse of the law. It was physical, it was economic, it was spiritual. Christ has redeemed us from the curse. Third John 2 is the reversal of the curse. Those three things, Third John 2, address that is ours, it's on the table. I pray above all things that you may be in health, that you may prosper. And some people spiritualize, say it's spiritual prosperity. No, if it's spiritual to, to prosperity, God, then God is doubling up there and leaving something missing. That you may prosper, advance, be lifted up, be, 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 be provided for, have provision, have prosperity. How will it have looked? Oh, and God bless Abraham. And bless him and bless him. And then left poverty with him. Is that, is that fullness of blessing? Listen to me. The Bible says in Galatians that we are complete in Christ. I think that's Galatians 2.10. We are complete in Christ who is the head of principality and power. We are complete. Nothing missing. Nothing. Everything was provided that is needed for life and godliness. So it's on the lost table. He prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. And he anoints me with oil. The anointing takes care of the enemy. How many of us are anointed? Lift up your hand and say, I'm anointed. Say, I'm anointed. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me. For the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of prison to them that are bound. The anointing takes care of the enemy. It's targeted against the works of the enemy. Somebody here? You're complete in him who is the head of principality and power. Think Christ. In him. In him. Our identity is in him. We identify with Christ. In him we have redemption through his blood. Even the forgiveness of sins. Spiritual blessing. We have been fitted to partake of the lost table. The inheritance of the saints in the light. So he says, I wish above all things that you may prosper. Economic empowerment starts with God. Deuteronomy 8.18 but you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he that gives you power, that anoints you to make wealth. When he anoints you for wealth, you won't struggle for it. You will make effort, you will work. You will be diligent in work. But there are people that work more than truck pushers and make nothing of it. The blessing of the Lord made rich and he has no sorrow with it. Are you here? He's the one that anoints us for wealth. He's the one that anoints us to preach. Different anointings. I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health. Even as your soul prospers. He wants us to be blessed economically, financially. God wants us to have material things because we live in a material earth. 
Are you hearing me? You can't go through life spiritualizing everything. Abraham was blessed with material things. With servants, with money, with cattle, which was a measure of wealth in those days. He was blessed all around. He could point at a land and buy it. They said, we will not take, take. He said, no, I want to buy it. You buy it, they will do the agreement. He will sign, they will sign, he will take it home. Abraham was blessed all around. And our blessing is after the blessing of Abraham. The order of the blessing of Abraham. Then, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health. Physical health. How blessed are you when you are down with sickness? Eh? You have money, you're, you're heaven bound, you're spirit filled, but your body has been weakened by sickness and disease. Are you fully blessed? And then I looked at that lost table, at the buffet. There is no sickness in it. Rather, there is the remedy for sickness. Healing is the children's bread. It's on the table. Healing is there. If you're sick this morning, stretch out your faith and take the bread of healing. Take it. It's your right. As a child of God, it's your right. Jesus already paid. Stop giving excuse. Stop permitting things God did not permit. Things you, anything you tolerate, you cannot get rid of. Even as your soul prospers, the measure of your spiritual prosperity it's your spiritual prosperity that drives all these other things. A second touch. Forgiveness is on that table. Deliverance is on that table. Strength is there. He gives strength to the weak. Stretch out, take it. Sometimes you don't even have the inner strength to handle anything, even to take the simplest of decisions. You need strength from God. Galatians 3.14 shows us that God can strengthen us with might by his spirit in our inner man. Then we read in Psalm 103, 1 to 5, Bless the Lord, O my soul. Bless the Lord. Exalt him. Worship him. Think of the benefits. All the benefits. You can rebuke headache and it will go. Some don't know how to rebuke him. You rebuke it. I've been talking to a friend of mine who has had diabetes for years and he's not really saved. When I want to talk to him about healing, he said that there is nobody that has ever been healed of diabetes. The other time I gave him simple testimonies on how you can rebuke the devil in certain situations. He said, you're very powerful. That's what he was telling me on phone. He said, you're very powerful. I told him it's not a matter. He doesn't understand. It's not a matter of being powerful. That is the name of Jesus. Faith in his name. Then I begin to explain certain things. You know, the Bible says you should not cast your pearl to swine. There are certain things some believers can't carry. I tell him certain, I mentioned, begin to tell him certain things, you know, by way of witnessing to certain truths of the Bible. He said, why haven't you told me all these things these years? I said, these are elementary things you should know if you come into faith. He said, why didn't I, you, he can't handle them. He can't even carry it. You can't take, you can't take a primary six pupil and begin to Lecture him on algebra. It can't work. Are you here? They can't, he can't understand what you're talking about. Look at it. There are many things he won't understand. They, they sound like Greek to him. They say, why, why, why have you told me this? Thing? Get saved first. And then the Holy Spirit will begin to teach you. You want me to say that you tell Why haven't you told me this since all these years? 
All these years I've been telling you to come to Christ. Did you listen to me? How can I be? You know, Jesus said, don't bother. I teach them in parables. You don't take precious things and hand it over to unbelievers. They make light of it and get hardened. So, Psalm 103, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Worship. I wish somebody would worship God to that as your first approach. Just, just tell him what he means to you. Just appreciate him for his goodness and his mercies, what he has been to you. At the, when the chiefs are down, God is all we have, every one of us. When the chiefs are down, God is all we have. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Can you switch over to the Amplified Bible? The Amplified said you should not forget even one of his benefits. And he begins to talk of those benefits. Get to verse 3. Verse 3. Who forgives all your sins? Who forgives all your sins? So the fact that you sinned and then is forgiven is not to be taken lightly. Psalm 32 verses 1 and 2 begin to talk about the blessedness of the man unto whom the Lord will not impute iniquity. What if God stacks your iniquities in your record? All your offenses there. It's a blessing. It's a blessed is the man whom the Lord will not impute, to whom the Lord will not impute in iniquity. Blessed is the man whom the Lord has forgiven all his sins. Forgiveness of sins. Or oh, it's on that table. Are you there? Are you here? Hey, but I messed up again yesterday. Go back to that table. Go back to the lost table. Who heals all your diseases? How many? Oh, every one of them. So why are you retaining some? Go back to the table. Healing is the children's bread. Stretch your faith. Activate your faith. Activate. It won't fall on your life like a bag of cherry. The just shall live by faith. Who heals all your diseases? Who redeems your life? Go back to... King James or New King James, who redeems your life from destruction, from terminal conditions, from things that could terminate your life, ruin you permanently, kill the person. Deliverance. Who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. Honor, dignity, everything. He dignifies us, he crowns us. Who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles? Believe me, believe me, your mates you know don't look like you. How many of you know? They don't look like you. You tell them, I've been in many places. When I tell them, I hate, they argue. One, one, in one institution where I was attending a course, we were discussing when a lecturer was there, and there was something I said. Um, to the fact that one of my children was serving in the youth service then we were discussing. So uh, two days after, two of uh, my classmates came to check out what I, I said. A couple. They came and were asking me, I said, with all these things, attending classes, and how do you do your school runs to find out whether that thing I told them about youth service? I knew that's what they were after. I, I just smiled. I said, all my children have passed that one. <laughs> they wanted to check it because they didn't believe it. Later, one of them, one of the lecturers was asking me my age in truth. In truth. And anyway, if you like, you can grow old at the age of 16. It's your business. But I've looked on that table and there's youth renewal on it. On that table. You see, David said, now I know that the Lord says he's anointed. He'll ask life of you. As long, 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 and you gave it to him, even a life forevermore. He asked life of you, and you gave it to him. Where did he? From the table. From the lost table, he's there. 
He asked life of you and you gave it to him. Have you ever asked? He renews my youth. Renews my strength. Have you ever asked for it? Or are you delighting in old age? At the age of 40, all your face has sat. So you're proving to people I'm an old man now. One man, one, 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 one of our colleagues, a, a senior colleague of mine, he said, I'll be Baba Abraham. He said he's not Baba Abraham. He sees his own that people should be bringing things to him. That he's Baba Abraham. <laughs> so he called me Owen. He said, Owen. He phoned me. He said, Owen, my, my son is going for masters in England. Bring 250,000 naira. Somebody is laughing here. It's his uncle. <laughs> anyway, so he delivers my soul, my life from destruction. He crowns me with loving kindness and tender mercies. He satisfies my mouth with good things. He gives me spiritual food and physical food healthy for my well-being. Necessary for my well-being. Are you hearing me? The word of God, the impact of it on your flesh. In, in Proverbs 4, from verse 20, he said, Attend to my words, my son, attend to my words, incline my, your ears to my sayings. Let them not depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. Uh, 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 heart. He said, For they are life unto those that find them. I health. That word health is, means medicine. Literally, it means med It means shama. It's medicine to all their flesh. The word of God, as you partake of the word of God, it, it quickens your, keeps you vibrant, it keeps your spirit. Your body alive. Are you hearing me? It has impact even up to your body. So he feeds us spiritually and he feeds us physically. All those things are there. Provisions. He satisfies our mouth with good things. Causing our youth to be renewed like the eagles. Spiritual and physical. Start with blessing the Lord today. Start with blessing him, appreciating him like the psalmist is doing. Then you see this second touch thing. They brought a blind man to Jesus Christ. I've told you it's a buffet. You can go for as many rounds as possible. <laughs> but when you when you go, when you are invited to a physical buffet, like I told you earlier, just you can eat the more you want. Go at even 10 times. Nobody will tell you go back. But don't stack your plate on the such a way that the people providing the food will be scared. My cousin was telling me of a man who went into a Chinese restaurant in uh, Atlanta there. Yeah. And he, this man sat down and after eating, the Chinese were watching him. <laughs> after he, they, 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 you know, they do these things on calculation. And put the price for the buffet. There are some people, if, you, if everybody eats like them, you will run at a loss. So this man ate and ate and they were watching him. So when he was leaving, the Chinese lady that was there say, say, told him, say, you eat here no more. Next, next time you carry away. <laughs> say, you eat here no more. <laughs> next time you carry away. You know that was next time you do take away. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> but somebody said not on the lost table. <laughs> Jesus, they brought this blind man to Jesus. And Jesus took him out of the city, maybe to remove him from the midst of unbelieving people. Walked with him out of the city and then spat on his eyes and laid hands on him. I asked him, do you see anything? <laughs> he said, I see men like trees walking. <laughs> Thank God he didn't have a cutlass that day. He would have treated men like trees. Because there was an impaired vision. They say half education is dangerous. So Jesus said, I'm not done with you then. I called him and laid hands on him. Go back to... Uh, uh, I... Go back to verse 23. And he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the town. And when he had spit on his eyes and put his hands on him, he asked him if he saw anything. Are you, do you see anything? Then he, he looked up and said, 
I see men like trees walking. Some of us see men like trees. You're ready to cut men as if they're trees. You need a second touch too. Then he put his hands on his eyes again. A second touch. And made him look up. Look up. Look up. That's where to look. Look up. That's where to look. And made him look up. And he was restored and saw everything clearly. Then he put, he, get to verse 26. Then he sent him away to his house saying, Neither go into the town, nor tell anyone in the town. You see, it would have been dangerous if Jesus sent him away after that first touch. It wouldn't be beneficial to him. It wouldn't be beneficial to any man. When the Lord completes a work in anybody, you will know. Naaman had to dip seven times in the Jordan before his leprosy cleared and his skin became like that of a baby. Are you here? It didn't happen in the first dip. It didn't happen in the second dip. It takes faith to continue. Third time, he came out the same way. In fact, the water will make it look worse, self. Fourth time, the same thing. But the instruction from the man of God was deep seven times. And you know he was angry. He took his servant to persuade him. Why don't you do this simple thing the, servant, the man of God told you to do? If I told you to do a harder thing, wouldn't you have done it? What more? He gave you a simple thing. Go and watch now. Let's see what happens. He said, okay, let me try it. If it doesn't work, I know what to do with that man. He went. Deep the fifth time, the same thing. He said, okay, let me complete it. And then I know I take a decision. Six times, the same thing. Seven times he came out. Leprosy was gone. And his skin was like that of a baby. There are people you can pray for three times. Three sessions of serious praying before you break through. So take more. Don't give up until you remedy the situation. Are you hearing me? Don't give up. Go again. Deep again. Go again. Go again. Elijah on Mount Carmel trying to release rain. Prayed seven times looking for just a sign that rain will fall. He prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and told the servant, go and check the skies. He said, there is nothing. He went back praying. He prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed. He said, go and check again. He checked the second time, nothing. He went back praying. The sixth time, he said, go and check. He came back the sixth time and said, there is nothing. There is no sign. He went back praying the seventh time. And prayed and prayed and prayed. And told him, God, check again. He checked and said that I see a finger of cloud just rising out of the horizon. He said, that's it. It's about to rain. The seventh time. Seven is the number of completion. You may, your own may not take seven times. This man's own took two times, but that was his completion. Are you hearing me? In first, in first Samuel chapter 3, verse 12, God said, when I begin, I will also make an end. When I start something, I will finish it. God is not in the business of abandoned projects. Until that blessing satisfies me, there is a way God deals with me. He doesn't give me things that don't satisfy me. It may take waiting, but when it comes, it will be something that will satisfy me. Are you hearing me? That satisfaction inside is a test of whether I've gotten God's best in that situation or not. God doesn't do half or do. You know what we have for do? How we for do. So because of how we for do, you just settle for what you will not take normally. Now, of course, whatever the Lord places in your hands, use it, but go for his best. We had a music teacher in those days, one Reverend Peters. 
of all he used to say, this is the one. Uh, uh, he, there's one thing, he's a Yoruba man, but there's something he, he, he used to say in Igbo, and then there is this one he used to say in English. And I still remember those in class two. He was speaking in so I watch a lot where my bloom off royal or gay queer me. Did you get it? Or watch a raw boy, my buru. In other words, you look for your mate and you like in a wrestling and casting that. You say, more for or gay queer me. He used to speak it in Igbo. Then he used to say, tell us. And he turned it into a song. He said, ask what you want. Take what you get. Use what you get until you get what you want. Eh? Ask what you want, take what you get, use what you get until you get what you want. Use what you get, but go for the ultimate. Are you here? A second touch. Oh, you were taught the other time, you were prayed for concerning this thing. You didn't have headache. The blood pressure went for about one week, two weeks. That means something happened. All you need is a perfecting touch. You will pray. You're going to pray. Go to the lost table. Go to the lost table. Stop making excuses for what God did not give you. Jesus paid a high price for our sickness and disease to take them away. If we, the inheritance of the saints in the light, God has made us fit to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. Not partakers of the ancestral burdens. Are we here? Are we here? You can make the difference in that family. There was an American pastor. In his lineage, everybody divorced, including his own father. Now, this guy got saved, became a preacher, and then turbulence came over his marriage. It became so tough. He tried everything he knew to do. To change the situation, it was, it was still turbulent until he got tired. He told God, one day, say, I'm going to divorce. His uncles, they divorced. His father, see, as many as he could remember, all of them went through the same thing. He told God, I'm going to divorce. God told him, now listen to me. God told him, if you divorce, I will forgive you. But that thing will continue with your children. But if you stand... I will help you to break it. And God helped him. You know, he that fights and runs away will live to fight another day. Don't tolerate what Jesus did not give to you. He stole him property. The thief commit not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So he plants into your life things that have nothing to do with the master. But Jesus said, but I am come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Listen to me. Who was it? Who was this man? I, um, one of these freedom fighters in South Africa. I, what's, that, what's that man's name? I can't remember his name now. It's a popular name. Steve Beko. Steve Beko. He said... That the greatest tool of the oppressor is the mind of the oppressed. In other words, the greatest weapon or tool of the oppressor is the mind of the oppressed. I don't think you got it. Did you get it? He will use your mind to hold in a pinfall. Your mind. He will lie to you. We've talked of arguments. He will argue the truth, you know. If he wins, you lose. He will tell you, and he will give you handy reasons why it cannot be for you. There are certain things we should break, even if it has been happening. The desolations of many generations... We are called to repair. A second touch. Jesus touched him a second time. Jesus made him look up. Look up. Look up. That's where to look. Up. Look up. 
And then the miracle was completed. By that second touch. If any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all men liberally and of breast not. But let that man ask in faith, nothing wavering, nothing doubting. For he that doubts is like a raging wave of the sea. It will rob you of your answers. That statement for wisdom goes for any other thing you need. If anyone lacks health, lacks strength, If anyone lacks peace, on that table is peace. If anyone lacks joy, David said, restore unto me the joy of your salvation. Go to the table. Go again. Go again. It was set up for you. In Philippians, 1 verse 6, in closing, go for completeness. What God has started, allow him to perfect. He said, being confident of this very thing, that he that has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. When God starts, he completes. He said, when I begin, I will also make an end. First Samuel 3.12. Right? When I start it, I will also make an end. I will uh, complete it. He doesn't abandon projects. He perfects it. Stay the course. Son of man, can these bones live? said, only you, God, can tell. He said, okay, prophesy to them. And then bone to bone. Then you have corpses all over the place. God said, persist until you get what you want. Speak, speak. When he asks us, he says, speak to the winds. That the, let, the, let the winds come on this slain. Until they rose up a mighty army. He kept urging Ezekiel, speak. Son of man, speak. Don't give up. If for the blind man, it took a second touch. For somebody, it may take seven touches, like Naaman. Whatever it takes, go for it today. I give you an opportunity to pray. That's the issue of the day. That's it. Are you here? That child will be healed. The blessing of the Lord makes rich. He has no sorrow with it. God does not give us children for us to sorrow. And so no disease will latch onto our children. It's not from the table of the Lord. If there is a disease, it came from the devil. Take it out. You have the anointing. You have the authority. You see, once it's in your domain, you can act in authority there. Satan has no right to perch in your domain. Psalm 138, verse 8, says that the Lord will perfect that which concerns me. Verse 8. Let's read it together. One, two, go. The Lord will perfect. To perfect means to complete. One, two, go. The Lord will perfect that which concerns me. Your mercy, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the work of your hands. God doesn't abandon projects. He sees them through to completion. Lift up your hand and say, I'm a project in the hand of God. As a matter of fact, tell your neighbor, say, you have not seen the last of me. Before we begin to pray, I want you to remember there are people out there that want to partake of the same grace God has given us in this place. And it's in your hands to bring them in. Turn your attention to the lost. Remember them. Have some concern, some sympathy, some compassion 
for the lost. Every Sunday we come here, every Wednesday we come here. There are people out there that if they hear half of what you've had, their lives will, turn, will have turned around since and are waiting for you to reach out to them. Look beyond yourself. Somebody needs you. James 5, 9, 19 and 20 says, My dear brothers and sisters, in James says, My beloved brethren, my dear brothers and sisters, this New Living Translation, if anyone among you wanders away from the truth and is brought back again, you can be sure that the one who brings that person back will save the sinner from death and bring about the forgiveness of many sins. Go back to verse 19. Brethren, if anyone among you wanders from the truth and someone turns him back, 20, let him know that he who turns a sinner, King James, some other translation say who converts, who turns a sinner from the error of his way, will save a soul from death and cover a multitude of sins. Maybe you've stopped the next 10 robberies by converting one potential robber. Are you hearing me? Maybe you've prevented the next prostitute from enlisting in the, as a prostitute. Or you have delivered one who is already in service. You cover a multitude of sins. That's the way to reduce evil in the land. Our country is in a mess. Evangelism is the way. Reach out to one person at a time. Reach out to somebody at your level. Reach out to somebody you can reach. Let's stop selfishness. I didn't choose this way. It was not my plan. But there was a, a need and God called me to meet a need. To do an assignment. I left her and followed him. I did not choose myself. Do something to save another person. There is somebody that if he had been in the service today, this would have been a turnaround for his life. Except even the extent, you see, you don't, even when you don't move to those people now, physically, unlike what it used to be, you can reach them. You can send forward flyers we publish on online. How many people did you send forward a flyer to? None. If you convert one sinner, you've reduced the sins on earth. The earth has become better by that one action of yours. Are you here? That's just the way it is. If I didn't get saved the way I got, uh, on the 13th of January 1986, only God knows how many evils I would have committed on earth up to now. Some of you would have been divorced if you were not married, if you were not in Christ. How many of us know what I'm talking about? You reduce evil through evangelism. All right, God bless you. Why don't you bless the Lord? Bless the Lord, oh my soul. And all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Let's rise up. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Father, thank you. I look back and there, uh, I can tell you that. Father, we thank you for provisions for this month that lies ahead of us. We thank you, we trust you, ourselves, our families, our businesses, our jobs, everything that concerns us, we put into your care. Father, we trust you for protection, protect us, guide us, lead us, provide for us, let the heavens open unto us, pour us, us the dimensions of blessings that there won't be enough room in our storehouses to contain it. Father, whatever we set our hands on to do this month, make it successful. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let every target be met and exceeded. Father, exceed our expectations in every vital area. Keep us in good strength and health. In the name of Jesus. 
Wipe away every heart. Strengthen our hearts. Wipe away every tears in our eyes. Strengthen our hearts. Perfect what you are doing for us. Increase our speed in progress. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, fight our battles. In any way the adversary will come against us, against our families. Let the spirit of the Lord lift up a standard against him. In Jesus' name. We cover our boat, our house, our properties, our lives, our children. Whether they are with us or they are outside. When they are in school, when they are abroad, we cover everyone with the blood of Jesus. Father, let the blood of the everlasting covenant speak for us. I speak peace into every life. I speak peace into every family. I speak peace into every home. I speak peace over you in your place of work. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Heavenly Father. And so, Father, we put our covenant offerings as seed faith for this month into your hands. Accept us and accept our offerings. Father, we expect great and mighty things. Trigger things beyond our ability. Trigger things, blessings on our behalf beyond our ability or merit. Let the harvest begin mightily. Let the harvest begin. Let the harvest begin. Shield us in these difficult days. You supply all our need according to your riches in glory by Christ Jesus. We are not limited in any way by the economy of Nigeria or the economy of the world. Father, cause men to help us. Cause men to favor us. We claim favor with you and with all men we have to deal with. In Jesus' name. We claim favor with you and with man. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Our eyes have seen the beginning of September. Our eyes shall see the end of it. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we've prayed. Amen.